Hi everyone. Today is Thursday, February 17th, 2022. I'm Crystal Dawn Hill and I'm here to do part one of my journey. This part is going to be from birth up to at least my first initiation at age 12 and if I haven't talked long and I feel like I could go a little bit further then it might be up to my second um, phase of my journey to about age 18 to 21. So I was born in 1968 and my family lived a very modest life. Um, my dad was a blue collar worker and my mom was a homemaker until age four when they separated and my mom started to work. And she just worked um, a clothing factory job for most of my early years. Then at, um, when I was age eight, my mom got with someone and we moved in with him and then they got married a couple of years later. So when we moved in with him when I was age eight, that's really where my spiritual journey began. Um, a few years earlier than that, when my mom was single and um, I started school at age six, I had a few paranormal experiences of um, feeling presences with me and that kind of thing, but I had no understanding or awareness of what it was at that age. I just knew that it was frightening and I didn't want any part of it. <laughs> so when we moved in with the man that would soon after become my stepfather, um, that's when my spiritual journey really began. And I started experiencing metaphysical, mystical things. So I would sit around and listen to my family tell ghost stories and my mom would sometimes talk about um, empathy and telepathy and she kind of sparked my awareness of these phenomena but at the same time when I would share about something I was experiencing um, she would kind of debunk it and tell me it was just my imagination or that it wasn't real and so I started to push everything down. The first really inexplicable thing that I had happened to me was during my first initiation at age 12. And during that initiation um, started out, it's just I think I had gone to school that day, I think it was a weekday. And that evening, my family and I were um, having dinner, and I can't recall if it was spring or autumn, but I remember very distinctly feeling pulled to go outside, and it was sprinkling rain, and I can remember the rain was warm, so it was probably either um, late spring or early fall. And my grandmother lived with us, and she was like, why does that child want to go outside when it's raining? And it was like I was just captivated by whatever it was that was pulling me out. And there really was no option. I was like zombie and just, you know, going straight out the door. So I stood in the rain, and I remember feeling... Um, um, a field of energy around me like I was enveloped in this circle and, and nothing could get inside that circle of energy other than whatever it was that had pulled me out and if I didn't know better it would have felt like the rain was just pouring on me and it was dry everywhere else. It was very bizarre, especially for a 12-year-old mind who had never experienced anything like that before. So after that, um, I remember sitting down on the steps and 
I felt like I was being communicated to. I was brought up in a dysfunctional household um, after my dad left. My mom um, took kind of a downward turn in her life and made some poor choices and wasn't really the best role model. And I often felt pulled between what she wanted for me and how she was trying to train me up, so to speak, versus whatever that intuitive inner guidance was that I was feeling led by. And so when I was seated on, sit, seated on the steps, um, I remember feeling like that inner guidance was communicating to me. And what it said was, you can either go in your mom's direction or you can follow me but if you follow me you're gonna be in a battle with her for the rest of your life and even though I was only 12 I still had enough rationale within myself to be able to think okay so I know whatever this is inside of me talking to me is good so if I have to decide between that which I was defining as God if I have to choose between God and my mom then my mom must not be on that right path so I better go with God and so that's what I chose and the guidance was giving me the right information. I actually did have a very turbulent relationship with my mom for the rest of her life after that. So, I didn't really think very much about that day, looking back on it, until I had my first conscious awakening at around age 30 and during that awakening um, that was very much more poignant and impressive on me and I'll go into that in a little bit either in this video or in the next one but for right now I just want to say that it made me look back at my first initiation and reflect on everything that happened and at age 30 when I had my first conscious awakening um, we also had just gotten I was married at the time and we had just gotten our first computer and the the computer uh, the internet led me to a lot of different um, research about different phenomenon and I actually found, you know, chat rooms and websites and so forth where people were sharing similar experiences to what I had. So, I, for the first time in my life, I felt like, wow, you know, there are other people out there that are having experiences like I'm having. And so that really made me reflect back on um, when my journey started and I started beginning to put the pieces together of myself and speaking of putting pieces of myself together when I was little I remember always having this um, empathy toward Humpty Dumpty and I seemed to like relate to him in some way and I always enjoyed that story and just you know Speaking from my child self, of course, not now, but I remember always just inside my heart, just hoping that he finally did get those pieces all put together. And I think what that was, was my feeling like I had fallen to pieces and, you know, was having that empathy for myself and wanting myself to be able to get all my pieces and put them together. 
So basically, that's what my whole journey has been about. Just collecting pieces along the way and putting them together to make sense of my life. So, at age 12, um, when, well, at age 30, when I began to reflect back on my first initiation at age 12, I started to understand a lot of what that day encompassed. Um, I could remember having visions and having intuitive notions about um, things that would come to be in the future, like globally. I didn't foresee actual events, just more of dynamics between people, you know, between notable figures and among the whole collective of society. Um, I also recalled witnessing a portal opening in our yard, and I remembered, um, not with my visual eyes, but internally, I knew that I was surrounded by beings that I didn't know their origin. I didn't know if they were celestial or extraterrestrial or cosmic or whatever and that's been part of the um, uncovering that I've been doing since age 30 when I started looking back on all this so what happened to me at age 30 that prompted this awakening was pretty much um, triggered by 9-11 and 9-11 wasn't the whole culprit of my awakening but it was it played a big part and that was because it really made me aware of how precious life is and how every day is it should be treated very special and that we should you know value human life and I wasn't brought up that way because I didn't have a really good role model um, in my household unit. I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants and just, you know, kind of rolling with everything and not really conscious about life and about humanity. So when I had my conscious awakening at age 30. By then I was in retail and I was, you know, surrounded in my daily life with people um, who were conscious and who I suppose could recognize that I was lost and inadvertently guided me into my awakening. So when 9-11 happened, you know, I really, um, that was my wake up call. And I didn't realize it until 2014 when I had my Twin Flame Awakening that a lot of other people had been awakened by 9-11 as well. So, at age 30, what happened um, around the same time as 9-11, I, I can't remember the exact time frame, but it was either a little bit before or a little bit after the 9-11 event. Um, I had my own personal event. And that was that I had been praying one night and I had felt like I needed to get out of bed and down on my knees. So I did. And that didn't even really feel sufficient. So instead of kneeling on my knees, I actually crouched down with my elbows on the floor and was praying that way. And even that didn't feel like I had humbled myself enough. And so I laid out flat on my stomach, which I would later find out is called the um, prostrate in certain religions. I suppose that's the name of it. Um, and I went unconscious. There was a part of me that was aware of my surroundings, but 
I was totally physically um, paralyzed and it, it wasn't painful or uncomfortable or scary. It was just blissful. And I remember hearing a voice whispering to me. And I can't remember now if I heard it with my audible ears or if it was just inside my mind. But the voice whispered, Ascension, Ascension. And I suppose I was out for like about 15 minutes or so. And when I came to, um, I... I guess I either laid there for a few minutes or maybe I sat up, but I stayed on the floor for a few more minutes, just trying to absorb what had just happened and trying to, you know, comprehend what it was. And maybe I was even trying to communicate with whatever it was that had whispered to me, but it was gone. There was no feeling of any presence with me or um, no voices or anything like that. It was just gone. And after sitting there on the floor for a few minutes and trying to regain my composure, I pulled myself up on the bed with um, my elbows and just sat there. And I can't remember if it was right at that time or the next morning, I got on the computer and looked up Ascension. And that's when I discovered the world of Twin Flame. And that new initiation about my learning about the term Twin Flame is definitely going to be in part two or part three of the series. But I didn't actually start on the Twin Flame journey per se, until 2014. So, what did happen, though, when I had my first conscious awakening in 2001, was that's when my life pretty much started to, and my life as I knew it before, pretty much started to come unraveled. Um, I realized that I was not married to the right person, so I began considering um, divorce and he pretty much helped me make that decision by the way he responded to whatever it was I was going through. I discovered my passion, which was writing. I discovered a part of myself internally that I was never aware of before. I was only aware of my physicality, my outer life, my humanness, my emotions, my mindset, my material circumstances, my job, my family, all of that. And this event where I became unconscious and heard this voice, that instilled in me a knowing and an awareness of myself on the inside, my soul, my inner consciousness that seemed different than my human self. She was mystical. She was mysterious. She was wholesome. She was compassionate and it changed my life in an instant. And my husband knew that there were things going on with me and at first I think he tried to be patient but I think he felt I don't want to speak for him because he never really articulated to me exactly what he felt about it but from the way he behaved toward me I gathered that he didn't have the patience or the wherewithal or the understanding or compassion to um be able to ride out with me whatever this was I was going through. So we did end up separating and eventually divorcing. And in 2002, I moved out and um, got my own place. I was working full time and 
um, I held that job for many years to come after this. And um, that was really, really when my journey started full force. And I really just threw myself all into my journaling, um, my desire to write stories, and um, my autobiography. And I was on this quest to find out, to get to the bottom of who I was, what my life was about, and what meaning and purpose God had for me to be here in this earth. So I think that's a really good place to stop. Um, 2002, when I moved and got my own apartment, um, a lot of mystical things and um, interesting things started to take place in my life after that. So I think that will be a really good place to start part two. So I think I've covered pretty much all of the points that I wanted to make up until this point in my life. Um, I think the only thing I'll probably add is that I did notice in 2001 that in addition to discovering um, the inner part of me and my passion for writing and what I really wanted to do with my life rather than just retail, I also started to notice that I was becoming more intuitive, more compassion, compassionate to others, and also more compassionate to myself. And so that is all I'm going to share on part one. Thank you so much for listening and following along my journey. I wish you all the very best along your journey as well and have a pleasant day.